Hi everyone, in this video I will be going over the Yusuko problem painting the fence from the 2013 January bronze contest problem number 2. So let me begin by summarizing the problem statement. Basically, Bessie the cow has a paintbrush attached to her and she basically moves left to right and vice versa across a fence. And her moves are given to us in this format, where we're given a number and then a letter. And so the number represents the number of units Bessie moves and the letter refers to what direction she moves in. So for example, this move 10L means that Bessie moves 10 units to the left, and the other direction is given by the letter R. So for example, a move of 2R would mean that Bessie moves two units to the right. So basically, given a list of Bessie's moves, we want to figure out what area of the fence gets painted with at least two coats of paint. Now, one thing that's important to immediately notice is that it is given that Bessie can move at most 1 billion units away from the origin during her walk. So what this means is that she can move 1 billion away in the positive direction and 1 billion in the negative direction. So in total, she can move 2 billion steps, which is a huge number. And what this means is that going through every single step that Bessie takes is not going to lead to an optimal solution that will run in time for all test cases, which means that we cannot go through every single step that Bessie takes. Instead, we need to find a more optimal way of solving this problem. So given this information, let's go through the test case given and see if we can find any patterns or any observations that can help us solve the problem in a more optimal way. So I have the list of instructions given from the test case over here. And so the first move Bessie makes is 2R. So she goes two from the right from the origin. And so I'm just gonna represent her moves with line segments. So here she moves two to the right, and then she moves six to the left, and then she moves one to the right, and then she moves eight to the left, and then she moves one to the right, and then she moves two to the right. Okay, so here we can notice that just by looking at this image, it's pretty easy to see which parts have at least two layers of paint, especially because we've represented these moves with line segments. And so the parts with at least two layers of paint have endpoints that align with the endpoints of at least one segment. So for example, over here, we can see that from negative 11 to negative eight, we have two layers of paint. We can see that from negative four to negative three, we have three layers of paint. And we can also see from zero to two, we have two layers of paint. So it's pretty easy to see where we have more than two layers of paint. So we already know that we cannot iterate through every single point Bessie goes through, just because that would not run in time, since Bessie can go through 2 billion possible points. So we can instead try to use the endpoints of the segments to know when a layer of paint starts and when a layer of paint ends. And as we iterate through, we want to keep track of when a layer of paint starts and when a layer of paint ends. So how exactly can we do this? Well, we can try to keep a counter. And so whenever we encounter a start point of a segment, we'll add one to the counter to indicate that a layer of paint has started. And then whenever we reach an end point, we'll subtract one from the counter to indicate that that layer of paint has ended. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to mark all the start points of these segments with the color red and all of the end points with the color blue so it's more clear. Okay, so let's just try going through this approach and we're just going to add one ever, whenever we see a start point and subtract one whenever we see an end point. So from the very beginning, we see two start points. So we would add two to a variable we'll just call layers. And so then the next point we see is an end point. So we would subtract one and then we would get one. And then we see a start point right after that. So we have two layers now. And then we see an end point later. So we subtract one and we get one. And so on, if we keep on doing this, we notice that we are able to pretty efficiently keep track of the number of layers of paint at each point. So at each star point or end point. So this approach gives us an idea of what information we need to store and how we need to store it. So we need to keep track of number one, the positions of these star points or end points. And we also need to keep track of whether a point is a start of a segment or an end of a segment. Okay, so now we know we have to keep track of these two characteristics of a point. And so this immediately hints at the fact that we should use structs. And the reason why is because, again, we want to keep track of two different characteristics. And we also want to sort these points so that we can iterate through from left to right. And so we would want to sort by the positions. Okay, so now we know how to keep track of when there's like at least two layers of paint. 
However, the problem is asking us to add up the total amount of area that is covered by two coats of paint. And so now we need to figure out a way to add these parts up. Okay, so the idea is that as we iterate through each point, so with each iteration, the first thing we can do is we can check if we currently have more than two layers of paint. And if we do, then that means that we can actually take the current position and subtract the previous position from it, and we can add this subtraction to our answer. And so let me explain how this works. So for example, when we reach this endpoint at position negative 10. So as we iterate through this point, we already know that we currently have two layers of paint. And the reason why we have two layers of paint is because we've already went through these two start points at position negative 11. So we've added two layers of paint. And so since we know that there are two layers of paint, what we can do is we can take our current position, which is negative 10, and subtract our previous position from it. And we get 1, which is essentially the area here. And so this approach actually works very effectively. And so the reason why this works so well is because whenever we come across a point and we check if there are at least two layers of paint, we know that we must have gotten at least two layers of paint from the previous point. And so what we can essentially do is we can subtract the previous position from the current position to get the distance in between those two points, the previous point and the current point. And so we know that within that distance, there must have been at least two layers of paint if there are two layers of paint by the time we look at the current point we're looking at. And so what we're going to do again is we're going to check if there's greater than or equal to two layers of paint. And if there are, then we will add to our answer using this formula. And then the second thing we're going to do in our iteration is we're going to update the number of layers of paint. And this will just be according to what we already discussed. So if it's a start point, then we'll add one. If it's an end point, then we'll subtract one. So we properly keep track of the number of layers of paint. So I'm just going to summarize our approach. So the first thing we want to do is we want to generate these segments. And by generating these segments, I basically mean that we want to keep track of all of the points involved. And we want to keep track of two things about each point. We want to keep track of the position of the point, And we also want to keep track if a point is a start point or an end point of a segment. The next thing we want to do is we want to sort these points from least to greatest so that we're able to go through each point from left to right. And the last thing we want to do is we want to iterate through all the points in sorted order. And we want to do these two steps at each iteration. We want to first of all check if there's at least two layers of paint. And if so, we'll add to our answer using this formula. And then the second thing we want to do is we want to update the number of layers depending on if the point we're currently on is a start point or an end point. And then at the very end, we'll output our answer. And so let's go over the time complexity for this solution. So the two things we're essentially doing is we're iterating through all of the points, so all of the segments. And the second thing we're doing is we're sorting the segments slash points. And so the overall time complexity would be O of n log n. And that is because of the sorting. And so if you look at the constraints, n can be up to 100,000. So a solution that runs in O of n log n time should be able to work for all test cases on time. So with that, let's go over the code. I'm going to be going over the code for this problem now. So the first thing I'm doing is I created an integer n, which represents the number of moves Bessie makes, and I'm inputting that in. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to input the moves themselves. So I'm using an integer a to represent the number of steps Bessie takes, and I'm using a character b to represent the direction she goes in. And so one thing we want to keep track of is we want to keep track of her current position and her next position, because we want to keep track of the positions of each of the points of the line segments we're trying to find. So I'm going to create a variable for the current point Bessie is at, which I'm going to initialize to zero because Bessie starts off at the origin. And then I'm also going to create a variable for Bessie's new point. And we know that if Bessie's going in the left direction, so she's going in the negative direction, then the new point would just be the current point minus a. We would subtract a because again, Bessie's going in the negative direction. And otherwise, if Bessie's going to the right, then we would add a to the current point. Okay, so now that we have found the two endpoints for a segment, which is going to be represented by the current point and the new point, we want to find a way to store the points. And so as we already mentioned before, we want to store two pieces of information 
about a point. And so we can use a struct to represent a point. So I'm going to do struct point. And then I'm going to do int position because we want to store the position of the point. And we also want to store whether or not the point is a start point or an end point. And so I'm going to represent that with a Boolean. And so basically, if this Boolean is true, then that means it's a start point. If it's false, then that means the point is an end point. And I'm also going to create an array of these points. And I'm making it two times the maximum amount for n. And the reason why is because we want to store double the amount of points compared to the number of moves. Okay, so now we want to store these two points in the array and we can store them in any order because we're going to be sorting them anyways. So I'm just going to do array of two times i dot position is equal to the minimum of the new point and current point. So this is going to be the start point. So I'm going to do array of two times i dot st is equal to true because it's the start point. And so again, I'm taking the minimum because we know that the minimum value is essentially the start point. When we're looking at the line segment from left to right, the minimum value is going to be the start point. And then I'm also going to put in the end point into our array. So I'm going to do array of 2 times i plus 1 dot position. And again, this time we're going to take the maximum of these. And then I'll make this false to represent that it is an end point. Okay, and the reason why I'm doing 2 times i and 2 times i plus 1 is because if you think about it, if we have i equals 0, then this is going to be array of 0, this is going to be array of 1, and then if we iterate through the next iteration, i equals 1, then this is going to be array of 2, this is going to be array of 3. So basically, 2 times i ensures that we are placing the points in every slot, so it starts off at 0, 1, then 2, then 3, and so on. Now the last thing we want to do is we want to update current point to equal the new point. After this, what we want to do is we want to sort the points. And again, we want to sort the points based on their position. So I'm going to do sort array, array plus 2 times n. And again, the reason why I'm doing 2 times n this time is because there's two n elements in our array. And so I also want to add a Boolean comparator function as the third argument to the sort function. And so I'm going to create this over here, bool compare. And then in this case, we're comparing two points. So I'm going to do point A, point B. And then we know if the position of point A is less than the position of point B, then we want to place A before B. So in that case, we would return true. Otherwise, we'll return false. And let me add this compare function as our third argument. Okay, so that concludes the sorting. Now, the last thing we want to do is we want to iterate through all these sorted points. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to check if there is currently at least two layers. And if there is, we want to take the current position and subtract the previous position from it and add that to the answer. And then the second thing we want to do is we want to update the number of layers. So I'm going to create a variable for the number of layers. And I'll just call it num codes. And I'm also going to create a variable for our final answer. And so we're just going to iterate through all the points. And so again, we know that if the number of codes is greater than or equal to 2, then we want to add to our answer the current position minus the previous position. And so the current position is just array of i dot position, and then the previous position is array of i minus 1 dot position. And then we want to update the number of codes. So we know that if array of i dot st is true, then we want to add 1 to the number of codes because this would mean that this is a start point. Otherwise, we want to subtract 1 from the number of codes because that would mean that we have an end point. And then at the very end, we can see out the answer. Okay, so now I'm going to test if this code actually works. So we get that it works for all test cases.